Anyway, moving on. Um, so we're going to now examine a story of, well, possibly great controversy in so much as this this is uh, as much as the Bay of Tapestry tugs on the heartstrings for many people and certainly the nationalistic pride and this kind of thing. So do uh, so too sorry do um, wrecks from uh, especially the Second World War uh, and these uh, are a, a couple of potential scandals surrounding um, uh, people looting military wrecks uh, in different parts of the world. Would you like to just sort of get us going on this? Yeah, um, again, these are stories that have been in the um, bubbling under, if you like, for uh, some years now. Um, but uh, in 2016, uh, there were a number of expeditions to the Java Sea. Uh, or, or an expedition rather, uh, expedition rather to, the, to, to the Java Sea, um, which visited the sites of uh, British and Dutch and American warships mm -hmm. that were sunk uh, in 1942. Uh, the area was uh, being invaded by the Japanese at the time. The, there was a joint uh, naval command which uh, involved the Dutch, the Americans, the Australians and the British. Mm -hmm. All four nations lost warships and significant numbers of personnel in that area in 42 and then afterwards um, a number a, 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 a number of other ships were lost in the area merchantmen but also warships um, including a significant uh, Japanese cruiser called the Hagiro. Hmm. Um, in 2016 an expedition, uh, expedition went there to look for the Dutch ships in particular because they were going to mark the anniversary Dutch Navy was going to mark the anniversary and when they got there they found that where they were expecting to see you know an 8,000 ton cruiser on the seabed there was a trench um, and now thanks to the work of uh, an Indian an Indonesian uh, Indonesian website news website called tieto.id mm -hmm. um, and we'll publish the, the link below the line on, 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 the, on the video. Which is, uh, uh, just briefly, it's an excellent website. I'm looking at it now. And it's, 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 it's really entertaining. They, they show a whole load of stats using really ex exciting uh, techniques. For example, uh, China iron and steel import based on country of origin and value. They have seen these octopus tentacles going up and down on a graph. Uh, you have um, uh, this, all the different wreck locations in the Java Sea. Uh, located in a, in a very clear, easy to to see kind of way, um, it's not. Uh, it's it's kind of it's, it's interesting. It's it's engaging. I guess is the word. It's not. It's engaging, but the story it's telling is actually quite a grim one. Yeah. Um, it uh, um, what it's making very approachable is, is a story basically of industrial scale theft and the desecration of what many people would regard as war graves, although in legal terms they're not war graves there's no such thing at sea under international law but um, these ships remain the sovereign property of the various governments the Japanese, the Americans, the British, the Dutch and should not be touched they're exempt under the salvage convention, the international salvage convention they're called sovereign immune vessels and they shouldn't be salvaged without the direct written permission of the sovereign government mm -hmm. but what the uh, our Indonesian journalist colleagues have found out uh, and published on the website is that more than 20 ships I think it is have been effectively destroyed hmm. by a probably around seven or eight uh, industrial crane barges yeah grabs. yeah well and they've gone so far as to as to publish photographs of these ships uh, and uh, the, the, all the relevant identification the national That's flag, the tonnage of the ship, um, for example, they're from China, um, from um, uh, what's well, this is this is this is the thing that all 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 these uh, all these crane barges are linked to companies in China, in particular from the Fujian region. Yeah, mm. um, but but what they're doing is they're using local scrapyards to mm. break down the material that they lift off the seabed. Um, again, I was, I was um, talking to um, sources in the salvage industry who were saying basically, although the price of steel at the moment is very low, partly because allegedly the Chinese have flooded the market with low-priced steel, mm 
uh, non ferrous is actually still fetching a premium and wh and what the where these guys are making the money is by pulling up big chunks of steel because that's the quickest and easiest way of, of getting at the non ferrous so it's things like pipes um brass portholes door handle you know, you, you name it if it's non ferrous from the propellers to the to the tubes and the boilers to um to to, to yeah, you know, the, the 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 scuttles and and and, and porthole uh, portholes, fixtures and fittings um, of uh, of sailors, fixtures and fittings, te uh, you know, bridge Bonks. telegraphs. Mm -hmm. It's all not uh, it's all non-ferrous and fetches a premium price, mm -hmm. um, particularly as it's pre-nuclear. Yeah. So you know that that was you know what you've got here is basically commercial looting. Yeah. Mm. Um, if you if you look at it in those terms. And that's before we get into heritage issues. The thing, though, that the Indonesians have exposed, which is, has really upset people, and I think quite rightly, um, is there is an allegation that human remains were found in some of these vessels, which is entirely possible, um, and were either dumped back over the side of the dredger, or if they were found on land, have been secretly buried or dumped. Mm. And obviously, that is deeply upsetting for the relatives of anyone who was lost on any of those ships. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, and the thing is, as well, I mean, you, you could. I have heard it said in similar situations that mm. it could come down to uh, a general ignorance of what it is that, that, that's being uh, dredged, in so much as uh, a Dutch um, ship, and if it is, a, for example, a, a you know dredger that's been hired from a Chinese port. They may not feel that attachment, but, but you know, we are talking about um, about relatively local ships, shipping, and ships as well. These won't won't, yeah. won't all be things like Dutch and, Brit and British and American, for example. No. Um, but the, the other thing, there's a there's a Swedish uh, ship that was sunk in the 1970s that's been involved as well. Yeah. So it, you know, in that yeah. respect, it does appear to be purely commercially driven. It's nothing. It, you know, it's not. Um, although there is another school of thought which somebody put to me earlier on, uh, earlier on in the week, which is that uh, in geopolitical, in modern geopolitical terms, um, it has the added benefit of removing evidence of the colonial powers. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, that, uh, that's true. Although, uh, I mean, that uh, are people really looking, looking, looking there for, for evidence of the colonial? Well, but, don't, don't forget, you know, in, in China we have a, a country that is investing um, millions and millions of dollars in, in um, building artificial islands in the um, South China Sea to extend its uh, territorial waters. Yes, that's true. Okay, um, okay, okay. So, so, you, so... You have a, 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 it, it may be a complete coincidence, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist on this, but uh, you know, it needs more research. But certainly, there could be a, a you know, modern geopolitical angle to it. Okay, too. I'll put the tinfoil hat away then. Um, but, <laughs> but, but okay. But uh, just coming coming back then, just to the the element of the of the metals um, being salvaged. Uh, is there any angle, any argument, any legitimate way in which this can be looked at as? A good thing in terms of recycling materials. Uh, I, I mean, uh, in terms of um, yes, okay, it makes good economic sense to to lift this this material because it it costs less um, to to re repurpose it as opposed to actually um, uh, cut, you know creating the steel from iron and carbon and this kind of thing. Uh, but uh, but beyond that, um, uh, it's also less energy intensive, presumably as well, to do that. Um, hence the economic benefit. I mean, is this not actually environmentally friendly, in some respect? Uh, I, I, I'm, I am very, oh. very deliberately here being devil's advocate. If that's oh no, but uh, uh, but uh, that's certainly the case, and, and certainly there have been economic uh, arguments put forward. For example, one of the um, justifications that has been put forward for these wrecks being taken apart is that they were interfering with navigation, and there have been allegations that permits were given. By local um, by, by local authorities to allow this. Um, now again, there are equally there are allegations that this was actually a, a smoke screen and a cover, and that um, shall well, we say not all these transactions were entirely above board. No, well, well just just to, just to clarify, in, interfering with navigation in terms of what the safety of the waters to pass through, or or literally right, the, yeah, the, the, the metal the, affecting the, a, a wreck being an obstruction of a sea lane, and right. therefore it's legitimate to remove it. Yes, um, and you know, and that, and that happens all the time, all over the world. 
Well, it does. I mean, actually, in, in here in, uh, in on the River Tyne, uh, in the in the Tyne in the mouth of the time, so there's a place called Time Mouth, <laughs> in the mouth of the time, it feels kind of weird saying it that way around, um, they uh, they literally have, on a number of occasions, had to sort of brush sh uh, regs to one side of the shipping lane, to sort of, just because they do get in the way, and, and, and you tend to get, and presumably, you know, obviously in this instance, it, wherever you have land mass, especially with strips of water in between, so mouths of rivers, uh, the, the, the passages between islands, you do tend to get a concentration of wrecks. I think the waters That's become right. become more unpredictable and also there's more of a you know potential for that, that stretch of water to be contested. That's one of the reasons... And you get collisions and you get... Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, where sea lanes come together and things like that as well. So, yeah, yeah. it's... it's, it's, well, yeah, well, it's and, and, and I suppose in that sense, therefore, it is... Inevitable, I guess, that 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 you will have wrecks in places where they are inconvenient. I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, yes. it, it is unavoidable. Um, yeah. But uh, okay. Well, well. Um, just to sort of uh, to continue that 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 line of, of questioning, then that reasoning. Do you think then that there's any way in which it we could find a way forward whereby the, these materials are being recovered in a way that is ethic ethically sound? Uh, with the permissions of the governments in, 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 uh, involved, but also where, for example, human remains and artefacts are returned. Or do you think that would just eat into the profit margin and that's that's not really in anyone's interest who's actually doing it? That, that That's that's a very interesting point. I mean, I, I, I've spoken to, uh, again, uh, Source and Salvage Industry, who says that um, the rise of heritage as a factor in granting marine licenses, certainly in the UK, um, could um, there's a logic in making a uh, a, a salva uh, somebody who wants to salvage a particular wreck um, treat it like a development site on land, whereby they have to do a pre-disturbance survey um, that anything of archaeological importance has to be recorded mm -hmm. and, uh, <clears throat> and and published, and that's that's a condition of a license. Mm. Um, and, and that would then free up um, vessels to be um, commercially salvaged. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and the vessel takes the point of the, you know, the, the, the office development or, 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 the, or the housing development. Um, it's treated exactly the same way. Um, there is another uh, factor in play, though, which is the, um, the attitude to ships more than 100 years old under the UNESCO Convention mm. on underwater cultural heritage, because there... Even a steel ship with a uh, cargo of more or less identical, for example, copper ingots, is treated as an archaeological heritage site, mm. and, uh, 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 it, it, uh, and and therefore is um, if, if if a country is, is signed up to UNESCO, there are all sorts of very strict uh, rules about what you can and can't do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and to make it even more complicated, a lot of those kind of ships, say for example a Victorian steamer that was sunk in a collision carrying a cargo of copper, um, could still be owned by the insurance company that insured the cargo and paid out to the owner or that company's successor and still has ownership rights. No, this Exactly, you're crossing your eyes at all this. Um, but, it, but in fact, bringing it right up to date, and a story that's just breaking, in the process of breaking at the moment, um, and it's very ironic, really, and I think what it does is highlight the importance of dealing with this on an international basis, is that there are now very credible stories coming through about British submarines and German submarines, in particular, off the coast of Holland, that have been um, looted by uh, dive clubs, mm -hmm. uh, souvenirs. Yeah, yeah, mm. and um, that I'm in the process of um, writing a piece about that at, at, at the moment. It's um, it, it, it's um, a, appeared on the on our radar before, but it, not in quite so much detail as we're now getting. No, so and, watch, uh, well, watch this space on that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it's funny. One one of my first um, one of the first things I did in the northeast when I uh, was first looking for for for, for something to do. In terms of archaeology, when I moved moved back here to marry the wonderful Mrs. Soup, um, was actually I was involved in in logging and transferring records of shipwrecks off the coast into the local HR database, and uh, and the, the, this is where this is where the, 
I find I find this whole realm so interesting in so much as I'm not I'm not an expert, but in that instance I got I got a very good crash course in in the relationship between uh, jurisdiction, um, the the wreck involved, the description of the wreck, but also actually where we get that information from. So an awful lot of the detailed information that we were getting about First World War, Second World War, uh, and just general shipwrecks off the coast actually does come from diving clubs. It comes yes. from people who are, who are diving recreationally. And this Dives is, and fishermen. yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, but what is it, what's interesting is that is that a little bit like with, for example, metal detecting, it is a subculture. People really do enjoy this, and they'll describe the ship as you know a twin uh, single prop or you know, what was it, single screw, twin screw, or whatever. They'll describe the yeah. the power of the engine. They'll talk about whether or not the wheelhouse is intact. Um, there are certain key elements that they look for as part yeah. of the fun of exploring often in you know, in low visibility off the north north coast um the, these wrecks uh and so actually there, there is a value for 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 those of us who are interested in 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 logging and and maybe even visiting these wrecks one day in working with these groups but yeah. i suppose it's, it's as you say it's it's to coin a term we're in murky waters we are um, um, and part of it is the is, is we're talking about cultures and it's really interesting i mean the, the, i mean two very quick points on that um going back to the far east um there have been issues with two other british ships the prince of wales and the repulse um which uh diver uh tour, tourism operators in malaysia uh and singapore have been offering dives on prince of wales and repulse um for a, a group of people called what are called penetration divers, they're the divers who want to go actually inside a wreck. Mm -hmm. They get they, the, uh, which is obviously a, a very skilled and quite dangerous thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, but that that's their particular branch of of, of the of, of the sport, and they have been known to not just take photographs but also take souvenirs, mm. including mm -hmm. things like beer bottles that mm -hmm. they found inside these wrecks. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's only the ones we know about. There's an unknown amount of material that would, could include personal possessions, for example, mm -hmm. uh, which um, are, may well be in people's private collections now. Mm -hmm. um, and but and we're certainly seeing in Holland and also in UK waters to a certain extent as well a divergence again in the diver community between those who are quite happy to take on an archaeological perspective, look but not touch record and report and the more traditional diver who sees uh, you know picking up a port you know a brass porthole as a you know fair exchange and part of the part of, part of the sport it's you know it's almost like you know artifact fishing you can make all sorts of analogies with metal detecting in those terms because again in the metal detecting world a lot of often the argument is that um, you know it's a people's sport and it, they're free to they're free they should be free to collect well, and this is where we we inevitably always come back to this point of what exactly are are we, you and I, but also archaeologists in general, actually after here? Uh, yes. We often get comments on these sorts of videos where people say, "You can't keep everything," you know, you can't. Yeah. You, <laughs> you're being you're being um, somehow you know spoiled sports, but also some you know like a, an artifact imperialism almost, you know. These are our. Yeah. This is our domain. Um, that's not remotely, I think, what what we're getting at. I think it is about 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 uh, the fact that any community, whether it's the archaeologist or or it's the diver or it's the metal detectorist or it's uh, in the case of fishing, you know, there are people who 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 who, who love catching the fish but then put the fish back. Yeah, you, know, you yes. don't you don't. Not everything has to be a destructive process, and I think that's something which archaeologists learned the hard way in the early years of, for example, antiquarianism. This kind of thing, you know, once you once you take it, it's gone. The value of it, in so many ways, is destroyed. Uh, and and these these conversations, they must be more. They, you know, we have to have more nuanced conversations. Um, we have to acknowledge. And I think, as I was saying, in a story last year, I've forgotten exactly. Uh, it might have been about metal detecting, detecting actually, in so much as. Uh, we are very similar to these people, archaeologists are. We are stuff focused as well. We love the stuff. Mm -hmm. We love this, what the stories, you know, the stories that come out of the stuff that we find. Yeah. Uh, and and it's it's about negotiating this path of of the balance between the interest groups, the inherent uh, socio cultural historical or or, or um, 
uh, emotional value of the material, uh, but also as well how that material eventually ends up. Uh, and so, so there are arguments to be made about recycling, there are arguments to be made about keeping it in place, there are arguments to be made about, about the rights of the people to have access to this material. Uh, yeah, and I, I think there are particular issues around um, shipwrecks that contain human remains, yeah. and particular, even more so, issues around shipwrecks of military vessels. Yes. Because, um, you know, and certainly in the UK, and I think, I think in places like the States as well, uh, that, that we have what's called the military covenant, where the government undertakes to look after its servicemen and their families. Mm -hmm. And that is not a, an undertaking that ends with the, that person's death. They're, they're, they're going, you know, the part of the military covenant is that, that you know, that their remains will be treated with respect and their families will be given access and things like that. Yeah. Um, but when uh, you have the government apparently turning a blind eye to this kind of mm -hmm. wholesale looting and what many people would argue uh, the desecration of grave sites mm -hmm. um, that uh, it becomes a very resonant issue yeah um, yeah. yeah absolutely absolutely without a doubt um, and yeah fraught with, fraught with very pertinent issues um, undoubtedly this will come up again in the future but, I can uh, pretty much guarantee that yes yes